In the 1960s, the 24 Hours of Le Mans was the pinnacle of racing. Manufacturers from all over the world brought their cars here to compete during the grueling 24-hour endurance race. That was the ultimate combination of speed and longevity. Ferrari, Maserati, Porsche, Aston Martin, Lister, and Lola were just some of the names that were emerging as heavy hitters at Le Mans around 1963. All these manufacturers' high-strung 8-cylinders, 12-cylinders, and 6-cylinders combined together for a symphony of RPMs unlike anything else. But there was one car that was sprinkled in amongst the pack that wasn't like all the others. When the other drivers had to start thinking about shifting their cars once they started to cross the 6,000 RPM level, the driver of this car did it. Climbing up to over 60,000 RPMs, this car was an engineering marvel in its own class. This car did not feature a normal internal combustion engine at all. In fact, this race car was powered by a jet turbine engine that you would find in an aircraft. This is the history of the jet-powered race car that changed racing forever. The Rover BRM. Hey everyone, welcome to Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the rarest and most unique cars ever made. So if you would like to see more short-form documentaries on unique cars like the Gambala Avalanche, or the Rover BRM and others, then make sure to subscribe to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and also click the notification bell as we will be dropping new videos nearly every single week. But now, let's get into the history and specs of the crazy jet-powered race car that you all came here to see, the Rover BRM. While the Rover BRM competed at Le Mans in 1963, 1964, and 1965, the history of this car goes back to the late 1940s. See, right at the tail end of World War II, jet turbine technology and aviation was quickly becoming the future with the introduction of the German Messerschmitt Me 262 and the British Meteor Jet. Throughout World War II, Rover had been aiding in the creation of the jet turbine technology for the British government, which was to be utilized by the RAF in British airplanes to combat the Germans in the skies. After World War II, Rover saw potential in using these turbines to power potential road cars in the future. As a result, Rover started working on experimental prototype turbine-powered cars to hone the use of this technology in future vehicles. The first prototype Rover turbine car, the Jet 1, was built around 1949 to 1950, with subsequent other prototype turbine vehicles known as the T2, T3, and T4 being built all throughout the decade following. All of these test turbine vehicles were honing and perfecting the turbine power plant and its application in a road-going vehicle. The experimental Rover T4 was actually shipped over to France in 1962 to complete a preliminary lap of the legendary circuit before the actual running of the 1962 Le Mans. And the car was a smash hit. So much so that the people who ran the 24 Hours of Le Mans offered a $250,000 prize for anybody who could run a turbine car the following year at Le Mans and have it compete the full 2,237 miles of racing within the 24-hour time frame. With the notoriety and widespread appeal of the 24 Hours of Le Mans at the time, Rover thought that running a turbine-powered car at Le Mans would bring them more business and name recognition with customers for their stunt. Plus, with the potential prize money, they might be able to get reimbursed for their development costs. The problem was, though, was that Rover didn't really have any real experience building Le Mans caliber race cars. So Rover enlisted the help of a company called BRM, which stood for British Racing Motors. British Racing Motors was a Formula One racing team and a company with a prolific history of building serious race cars. Hence the name of the car in question, the Rover BRM. Starting in 1962 with development into early 1963, the first iteration of the Rover BRM was built. This open-top Spider design was built off a substantially modified BRM Formula One chassis. Like many other cars at the time, this vehicle featured a complete aluminum body. This first iteration of the car was powered by a 2S-150 gas turbine engine that they left mounted to the rear of the chassis. This turbine engine allegedly made around 150 horsepower and operated all the way up to about 55,000 to 60,000 RPMs at its peak. Now this power was actually put down through a single speed transaxle. No shifting was required as the car climbed in RPMs. This made the car's acceleration characteristics very similar to a car that had a very long set of rear gears, 
you really had to stay in the car for a while to get it moving. It was much more of a back half, back end car than it was a raw acceleration car. Displacement on this gas turbine engine was measured out to be effectively 2 liters, which would have made it fit into the 2.0 liter class Alamont for 1963. However, the BRM did not actually race in this class during the 1963 24 Hours of Le Mans, as the fuel tank required to make the car competitive in this class was actually twice the size of the tanks allowed by regulation. The BRM had a 58-gallon fuel tank versus the allowed 29 gallons by regulation. Therefore, the BRM raced in the 24 Hours Le Mans in 1963 as unclassified. In its initial outing at the 24 Hours Le Mans, the Rover BRM managed not only to complete the full 24 hours of the race, winning the supposed prize, but it would also place impressively well. If the BRM were to actually have been entered into its class and been an official running car, it would have placed 8th overall. It even managed to touch just about 150 miles an hour on the famous Mulsanne Strait. This 1963 race gave Rover and BRM the confidence that they needed to come out swinging for 1964 with some major improvements to the car. The team went back to the drawing board and redesigned the entire body of the BRM to be a closed cockpit design to help with drag as opposed to the prior open top spider version. They also revised the heat exchangers on the turbine engine which radically increased fuel efficiency. With things all moving in the right direction, the 1964 24 Hours of Le Mans looked extremely promising for the Rover BRM. Tragically though, the 1964 version of the Rover BRM, which was for all intents and purposes race ready, and would have been actually placed in an official class at Le Mans that year, was severely damaged before the race in a transporting incident, causing the car to not be able to run in 1964. For 1965, the Rover BRM was repaired and sitting on the starting line at Le Mans for the famous 24-hour race, piloted primarily by Graham Hill and Jackie Stewart. And once the checker flag dropped, the BRM was off. Now, the 1965 running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans was off to a great start for the Rover BRM, until one point early on in the race when debris from the track got sucked into the turbine engine, initially damaging it while Graham Hill was driving. The turbine began overheating as a result, and then later on in the race, when Jackie Stewart was behind the wheel of the car, the car began to suffer more issues stemming from the initial debris that further hampered the car's fuel efficiency and total power output. The Rover BRM was wounded for almost the entirety of the 1965 24 Hours in Le Mans and had to race down on power and down on cooling ability. But even with the car's power plant substantially damaged, the Rover BRM managed to finish 2nd in the 2.0 liter class and 10th overall at the 1965 24 Hours of Le Mans. Against all the other major manufacturers, this was not bad at all. Sadly though, that was the end for the Rover BRM. After its historic outing at Le Mans, the car was essentially retired from racing and used mainly as a display vehicle. The car did receive a major restoration in the early to mid 2000s. The Rover BRM and other turbine-powered cars like the Howmet TX and the Chrysler Turbine Car are such unique vehicles because they are part of a bygone era. With the rise of electric cars and governments around the world moving in the direction of mandated electric vehicles, we probably won't ever see any gas turbine-powered cars ever again. So we might as well cherish the few that we had and celebrate them, like the Rover BRM. And that concludes the short history of the Rover BRM. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure you're subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.